Hello, I'm Tabitha Mufoni and welcome to On the Farms of Africa. This is a show that brings you various tech farming methods, trending and emerging agribusinesses in Africa. This week, we stroll in the fields of Makweni County, eastern of Kenya, where we take a look at mixed farming. Next, Alex Gathi, an analyst, tells us what's new in agribusiness. Later, we meet Mr. Tortoise, a rare money-making machine on our farms. Sedentary farming is common in most arable lands of Kenya. This is a practice that allows various crops to be on the same plot without any rotation. Anna Moai has practiced this type of farming for the past four years, growing maize, bananas, vegetables, pepper, you name it, and the yields have been rewarding. Let's take a look. Africa is a versatile land suitable for growing all types of crops. Although this could be affected by a number of factors such as climate, technology and education, financing and policy and infrastructure. Thus, climate factors such as drought and rainfall scarcity are a huge concern that affect the eastern part of Kenya, hence lack of enough water supply for irrigation. But one farmer, Anna Mwai from the region in Makwene County, has proven otherwise. Anna has been practicing mixed farming actively for the past four years and her source of water has become a solution to the growth of her yields. I've been a teacher since my young age after school. I started teaching. I retired in 2014, January. But even when I was teaching, I was still a farmer. Many of the trees I planted when I was teaching. So when I retired, I thought it was good for me to look for water so that I can now station at home and irrigate whatever I want to plant. So that is when I sank my borehole in 2014 after getting my pack, <laughs> a retirement. That is what I used. Investing in agriculture is the best way to end hunger in the nation by feeding the people. It is through the proceeds from the farm that livelihoods thrive. Mainly I deal with the vegetables and a little of maize so that I can have food. I'm not complaining. Whatever I plant, I get uh, something. I depend on the borehole to feed me. Although I, my children are grown-ups, as a human being I need money, I need to do this and this. Anna's first selling crop has been vegetables, which she passionately takes care of. This is about a month. juzi. After some time, it collapse. Marketing ya skuma, nyingi ninafanyia hapa nyumbani. Lakini mara nyingi zikiwa nyingi, naita watu wa biashara, wanakuja wanachukua, wanapeleka sokoni. Gunia ikijaa vizuri, inaweza kutoka hata elfu moja, elfu mbili sometimes. Inategemea vile sasa mboga ziko. Wakati mungine hakuna mboga, utapata pesa vizuri. Lakini wakati kuna mboga, kila mtu anamboga. Si vitu vinakuwa vingi kwa market. Kwa hivyo, still ziko cheap. Awa, awa wa kuuza wa, waende wa, wa kale, mtu ambaye ananua tu kidogo na muziaga sita kumi. Na wale ambao wanaenda kuuza sasa za biashara. Tunafika nane, wengine wanalalamika na weka tisa. Besides the vegetables, are other long seasonal crops that add a coin to the bait. Hizi ni seeds za dania. Hapa ni meprepare, ni kapanda dania. Tio hizi sasa zinaanza kumea. Dania iko two weeks. Nina one week ya kumea na sasa si unaona zinaanza kushika matawi. About one month itakuwa ready for harvesting. Na unajua dania you don't transplant it. Una, unatoa hapo, unaenda unapika. Pia nilikuwa nimepanda spinach. Nime transplant, kapeleka upande ule. Wiki ya tatu sasa zikuwa hapa. Na zikimaliza kama wiki ine tano. Nikiweka maji vizuri na nilimia vizuri. Itakuwa ready ya kutoa shambani. These are French beans. I don't transplant them. 
nilipanda tu straight niliweka mbegu tu kwa mchanga na nikaweka maji zikamea 45 to 60 days zinakuwa ready 1 kilo 1400 lakini ukisha zitoa na uweke dawa unaacha season moja inapita usipande the next season unaacha season moja alafu ile nyingine unapanda hizi ni, nilianza kwa ku prepare the land uh, nilichimba mashimo ya 3 feet by 3 feet 3 kwenda chini na 3 upana alafu nikachukua wheelbarrow ya manyua nika mix na the top soil ile ilitoka juu nikaweka ndani nikachanganya na nikaweka ndani and then nikaenda nikatafuta seedlings zingine nimetoa katumani research station zingine nilipata tu hapo kwa shamba yangu ya early last year ndio nilianza kuzipanda nikaziweka lakini hizi zingine upande huu nilipanda 2016 november alafu haziko siku maliza nikaendelea na hizo zingine ambazo niliang alafu sasa nikaendelea tu kuweka maji wakati hakuna mvua huwa naziweka maji like now nimeanza kuweka kutoka upande ule kwa sababu za upande ule zinaonekana zikiwa wiki nimeanza kuweka maji kutoka upande ule kila shimo naweka maji na jaa kama hii akatumani walikuwa wameniambia one year lakini some imeteki more than a year but nashukuru inaendelea kukua niko na ile ya kupika na ile nyingine tu ya kula ikiwa imeiva Even though her main challenge has been infestation of worms eating on some of the crops, she has gotten rid of these by use of manure and adding of fertilizer that has kept such calamities at bay. I planted them early June after the rains because I wanted to irrigate. Leo sasa sinaendelea lakini nilisumbuliwa sana na zile worms ziko kwenye mahindi siku hizi. Zilinisumbua sana when they were young. Lakini nikapiga dawa tofauti tofauti mwisho nikaona wameisha over time she has had an established market for her goods but borrowing a major turn off for the business mara nyingi kwa sababu sijapanda in a big way huwa zinaisha tu nauza hapa hapa nyumbani kuna wamama wa biashara wanakuja na wauzia zikiwa nyingi zaidi napeleka sokoni kola kuna soko fridays nikitaka hata nikitaka kupeleka soko naenda tu kuuza tatu kwa msini. si uzangi na gunia Food throughout the year is the main purpose of agri business. Anna knows this too well to inspire other farmers on the importance of adequate food supply. I would like to encourage people who want to join farming because there is a lot of wealth in farming. When somebody does farming in a serious way, you must get food for yourself and maybe people around you. I would encourage the ones who have water near them to be planting crops throughout the year so that our area can be full of food we, do, we will not need food from anywhere Source of water might be the challenge for people in the area but with proper business strategy put in place Makweni County might be on the map as a reliable stable food supply economy in the nation So many things are put into consideration before planting a certain crop as well as the commercial value invested into it. Let's take a look at how the markets look like. Mr. Alex Gathe. Yes. So yes. what what opportune moments are there for the agri business sector looking into it that the government's main focus is now on the big four agenda. How does agri business benefit from this? The big four agenda, the critical one is the food security because without food security we can't do the other three can't have the housing the medical you know and the, uh, the critical one is the food security people must eat food will never run out of fashion for every meeting for every anything you do you must eat after you do everything so the opportunity is huge if you look at the africa by 2030 it will, the, the food the agribusiness uh, the agribusiness sector will hit a 1 billion 1 trillion dollar mark that's a huge investment that's huge uh, business uh, 60% of the arable land in the world is in sub-saharan africa that's an opportunity that we need to exploit as a government as a people if you cannot feed yourself you're not sovereign so the first thing is you feed you feed your family you feed your people you feed your clan you feed your country you feed your people so these are there are huge opportunities in terms of um, mechanization in terms of adoption of innovations using like uh, biotechnology or using um, the innovations that can revolutionize the farming in Africa 
Yes. Great. And now looking at it, that 60% of arable land in the world mm. is in Africa, mm. and some of it in, in the sub-Saharan, in sub-Saharan Africa. Yes. So why are we not able to feed ourselves as a nation? Why is this? And what strategies can be put in place to ensure that Africa can be able to feed itself? Good question. Doing the same thing, expecting different results, will not take us anywhere. We think it's business as usual. We're in a comfort zone. We think that we, we are doing well. We are not doing well. If you look at our production systems, we are using a kike, small hold, um, you know, we are, we are traditional methods. How can you feed the world that is about uh, six billion people with a fork and a jib? We need to adopt the latest technologies, mechanization. If we make agribusiness um, fashionable, where the money is, the youth will learn to, to, to wear, like the way they're learning to ICT. So they'll come to agribusiness. So let's spice it up. Agribusiness. Let's come up with a viable business model. Looking at it, that uh, if we have a better technology and good um, farming methods mm. in place, mm. we are able to double our yields. Yes. But uh, looking at uh, on boosting the productivity of the agriculture sector, how can we compare Kenya to other African nations? Kenya, we may think we are doing well, but uh, statistics may show otherwise. Look at milk from uh, Uganda is cheaper than Kenyan milk in Kenyan market. Is that, could that be better to save it? Um, in terms of production per acre, even for maize, other countries are doing well. You may find uh, other acres are doing 60 bags per acre, as we are doing about 30, 40 on a good day. Um, if you look at the production cost statistics, Again, doing business in Kenya, especially the agribusiness, is too expensive. Farmers can't even break even. If you look at the production model, look at South Africa. They have 570 dairy farms, and they're producing about 7 billion liters of milk. Kenya, we have, we have 1.3 million farmers producing 5.2 billion. So are you seeing the production system? Our business models in Kenya needs a total overhaul. Um, look at uh, the post-harvest uh, losses. We are losing. Uh, Moloni, let me tell, let me surprise you. Out of our lit, what we produce, we are losing 40 percent past harvesting level point. So suppose we just concentrate on uh, working on the 40 percent. We reduce it maybe to 5 percent or 10 percent. We'll be food secure. Okay, and um, looking at empowering the local farmer, how can we, or rather what skills can we have put in place to ensure that our farmers are empowered with the right skills, with the right kind of technology to ensure better yields? Empowering the farmers, number one, is to ensure there is a steady, consistent market for their produce at a steady price. That to me is very critical. If need be, if you have to go back to where we were in the 70s, the guaranteed minimum return, that so be it, because that would guarantee that the farmers have a steady income to their produce. Adoption of uh, appropriate technologies and innovations in agribusiness, that again would go an extra mile. Manufacturing, what we call cottage industry, and value addition, processing. You know, processing could be very small, uh, very, um, you know, uh, appropriate uh, innovation, just uh, uh, an innovation that a farmer can do. So, basically, with those things, you'll be able to adapt and feed our nation. And also, we need to look at, by the way, when you talk about food security as a gender four, we should have put food security and food safety. Because you can have a bag of maize, so you are food secure, you may think. But the bag of maize has, is wet and there is a flatoxin. So you are food secure in other one hand, but are you food safe? So in actual, in actual fact, are you food secure? You are food insecure. So there is no food security without food safety. And I wish the government can invest in uh, tractors more than investing in tankers. 
Once you invest in food security, security issues will deal themselves. Invest in tractors, the money they are investing in tankers to deal with crime, they would put it in tractors. The more tractors you buy for our youth, the, through those business models you're talking about, the less tankers you'll have. But what are the main challenges facing the agribusiness sector in Kenya? The main challenges is uh, funding, especially from the, the, the financial support from the government. The private sector has not taken up. For the government, they are funding about 3.4% of the GDP, which is again is very low. If you look at the CADAP, Malabo Declaration, Maputo Declaration, uh, African countries, uh, Kenya is a signatory to CADAP. And we, they com the government committed to do 10% funding. So we have not re yet reached there. If you combine the counter funding and the government is about 6.4%, again, it's below the minimum 10%. If you look at the private sector, Kenyan banks are only financing 4% of their total loans, loan portfolio to agribusiness. What does that tell you? Agribusiness is not lucrative to the financial institutions. Agribusiness is not lucrative to the youth. And how can you tweak it and make it uh, attractive through business modeling? We need to change the production system in our country. All right, thank you, Mr. Alex. Karibu. Nice Karibu sana, Mudoni. Pleasure having you. More to this, Rwanda's President Paul Kagame said at our Willow Lead Forum, hosted by a Green Revolution in Africa, Agra, that Africans must commit themselves in investing in the African farms and locally adding value to agricultural products rather than shipping raw materials to foreign countries. How can we blame anybody else for some of these shortcomings? How can we blame anybody else for Rwanda importing uh, coffee from Europe when we produce coffee, mm -hmm. but we don't process it. Uh, UK, France, Germany, wherever, you don't grow coffee. Mm -hmm. You don't grow tea. Mm -hmm. But you, why, do you have, why do you have to transport our coffee, our tea, <coughs> to Europe? You give it some blessing and then you bring it to you. <laughs> Send it back to us. We pay 10 times more for. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. We have been shipping value for free to the other end uh, 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 and we pay heavily for, you know. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And at one point, uh, I was meeting the, we were in a meeting and I was the vice president of uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, representing the president. And um, I was just saying, you know, how, how, why don't you, produce chocolate for us and we eat chocolate directly from Ivory Coast. Yes. And not uh, all from Ghana. All. And then I even said, you know what, why don't we work together? We look for investments. Rwanda, Cote d'Ivoire, bring in Ghana, look for this money. Technology will always be found. It is, it is available. And we manufacture you know, start processing uh, and start exporting the cocoa beans to because we can do that. We can, we can, and we need to do it. So, into African trade, then uh, the CFT will have uh, uh, witnessed recently. And what is the meaning if we don't address these things? Yes, we can increase the meaning of that by doing some of these things that we know we can do. We take a short break right now, but when we come back, tortoises says are the money machines. Did you know that kale is high in fiber and water? Both of these help prevent constipation and promote regularity and a healthy digestive tract.
It also contains B vitamins and vitamin C, which promotes iron absorption. These are essential for the release of energy from food. Well, now you know. Tortoises are said to be the wisest species in the animal kingdom, but in the mammalia, they are a savory money-making machine for one Mr. Maundu, a farmer in Kitui County, eastern region of Kenya. Let's take a look at how tortoise rearing is contributing to the growth of the agribusiness sector. Tortoises are said to be the wisest species in the animal kingdom, but in the mammalia, they are picturesque sites on the farms of war in Kitui County. <laughs> of the 250 tortoises reared here, at least two species are common with Mr. Maundu, the tortoise farmer. And it's a lure 48, 1948. I'm a veterinary. I'm a assistant chief. I'm a zero three. I'm a retired. I'm a copy in a billion bow. Sanasana, I'm a market. Leopard tortoise in a pan cake. Indian night or leopard in a cake. Now, on a tough tissue, a cake at a cube, can the lap up and a quaff flat. As a cake, Sinaqua Cuba, Colicos a cube. He tortoise in a cube, Tabo tissue a cake, keep in door. Upper the Bondeca was very good on a cake. Can the name Mukiake? Nindefu Mukiake. Leopard and pancake types thrive best in semi-arid, thorny to grassland habitats, hence dominating the eastern region of Kenya, which occupies such topography. Pancake when I got same and bow Kunanjoto Nakuna Mau and Bow and Mejuekelea Kamapa Sinapatikano Pandewa to same Kutoka Coast Kitui Mwingi. Taraka, same ambao kuna, eh, kuna njoto na mawe ambao ina, ina jiwekeleana. Lakini kutoka pande ya kitui kwenda hivyo uwezi kupata pani keki. Manage pia ni mbaridi. Eh, wakai kwa sehemu ya mbaridi. Lakini hawa wengine, leopard, wako kila pali. Na hawa ni wengi. Sana sana, hawa nyama kama wakati wa kiangazi kama sasa. Wanaondoka asubuhi wanakula kama ni kwa kichaka majani kivika kama saa mbili wanarudi wanaingia pale ambao hakuna hakuna njoto kama wako kwa kichaka wanapatia magunia kama matatu kwa siku asubuhi labu jioni ila nasikia njaa naingia huko lakini wakati kama huu singine zinakaa hata siku moja mbili ya kutoka pale wako awali e, environment sio nzuri sana kwa leopard niko na kashamba ingine huko pande ya kibwesi pale inaitwa Kingudhen yeah hiyo ndio iko na wengi manake ni karibu 300 lakini hakuna pani keki manake mawe ya huko hakuna mawe na ile mawe iko huko haiwezi kukaa pani keki common diseases that affect tortoises are such as swelling of the eyes coughing or sneezing changes in appetite and behavior diarrhea abnormalities on the shell and leg injuries na waka kijiko moja kwa hii dawa kwa lita moja na waka hapa kwa maji ala unachanganya uh, toto is ni ile intu inapata kuku pika pande hii na pande ingine sipigi huku kwa ngozi manake kupa yawezi kuhuma huko na pika hapa ndani tu higi zima sasa ndiyo natumea kupambu maji hapa mpaka kwa kuroko catchment to rear reptiles, one needs a license from the Kenya Wildlife Service, which may take some time to acquire. Kabla sija retire, watu wa KNWS, wakishirikiana na museums of Kenya, walikuja kufanya research ya panike kitotois. Zero one. Na niliwa saidia, Kwa guide kwa onesha pali kuna mawe, 
na hapo sasa ndio akani advise kaniambia naweza e, kuangalia kama naweza kupata kufuga hizi kope nilianza kutafuta hiyo license mpaka 05 ndio nilipata hiyo license na nikafungua farm inaitwa Forest House Farm msi kuanza hapa ilikuwa sehemu nyingine lakini sehemu hiyo ilikuwa tu ni suitable kwa leopard haikuwa suitable kwa pancake na mpaka eh, 07 December ndio nilitoa hizo toto kutoka hiyo farm ya kwanza nikaleta hapa na kwa wakati huo sasa kutoka 05 ndiyo nimeanza hii kazi ya kufuka kope mpaka wa leo. Pani kiko nakaa kwa mawe. Na mijengo yote ile kwa around wanatumia mawe. Kwa hivyo zile nyumba ambazo ya, ni pani kiko toto hizi wanakaa zimeharibika. Kwa hivyo zinaendelea na kuisha. Manake zikikaa nje wakikutwa na oh, wana, wanyama wengine wanaliwa. Kwa hivyo pani cake wako katika hatari ya kuisha kwa sababu ya kuharibifu wa mawe. Kila ningeuliza tu ni wale wanatumia mawe, wale wanatumia kwa mijengo. Ile imewekelea ambayo iko na crevices au mapango, hiyo waache manage hizo ndizo nyumba tu ambazo zina protect hawa pani cake wasiliwe na wanyama wao. Challenge moja kwanza ni ni market kiangalia pale sasa kama pani keki ni wengi na wako pale sina market zingine zinakuwa kubwa inapita ile kiwango ambayo inahitajikana ya ya export kwa hivyo inalazimika sasa zikiwa kubwa sasa na zitoe ni ziweke kwa kwa farm ile nyingine sasa ni, ni kwa wanyama wale ambao wana wanakula hizi pani keki kama inji park na nyoka kuna wale wanakula mayai kama mungus short tailed mungus uh, monitor lizards na pia hiyo ani mbaja pia wanakula kwa hivyo eh, nisipoangalia vizuri pale nest imewekwa na na, na, na toto is nitoe pale niweke kwa ninino yangu watakuja wata kula hii mashimo hii ni ile short tailed mungus wanachimboa kitafuta wanaona hapa kama environment kama mayai ilikuwa imetekwa hapo sasa wanachimboa waangalie kama kuna mayai yule ana export atatengeza sanduku ya, ya kuweka hizo kope lazima KWS watakupatia permit utalipia hizo permit na pia na ule ndege si lazima utalipa kama leopard wakifika 10 centimeters uweze kukubalua kuuza mwisho ni 9 pande keki mwisho ni 8 centimeters kwa wakati huu sijapata market indirect natumia natumia agent wangu naitwa exotic international ni mzuri kutoka netherlands nikipata market ndiye ninatumia yeye anafuka ka million kati na export ka million pia na mimi na export pancake na na leopard tortoise sote so, nina sema baki 301 iko na miaka tatu hii haiwezi fika kilo labda mm, itakuwa kwa kubwa sana nusu kilo Mr Maondo is passionate about his job out of which he has been able to fend for himself and family kama zile pesa ambao nimetumia hapa ni zile niliuza Sembe kwanza niliuza 08 nikanunua pikipiki nikakaa wakati nilipata pesa sasa nikaanza kujenga hii ukuta hii ni ya mawe na simiti na imegarimu pesa nyingi na sasa pia itagarimu nyingi manake nikiuza tena lazima nianze kujenga hii ukuta tena hii imebolewa na maji kwa hivyo mahitaji ya pesa ni mingi sipokuwa nimesomesha watoto wakamaliza shule As he exports baby tortoises, older ones which live for over 300 years remain a captivating view on his farm for reproduction purposes as well as medicinal and delicacy value on them. Inaka kwa farm. Hizi ni zangu za. Ni zangu za uweze kuuza. Ikipita hiyo 9 cm hii basi itakaa kwa farm. 
zamani walikuwa wakisema ukiwa watoto wakiwa wagonjwa kifua ile ini yake ni dawa hao saingine hao wale walikuwa kila hapo zamani walikuwa na choma na moto lakini hiyo ini tuliiwekwa kwa maji kachemuka kama supu tukakunywa sio poison zini nyama hata mayai zini kama ya kuku tu mm kiona na yake ni kama ya kuku kuna tofauti Total says remain a valuable part of the agribusiness sector looking at human benefits and wild tourism. I can imagine a tortoise delicacy. Well, that's it for this week, but tune in again next week where we tell you how to grow organic rice. From me Tabitha Mothoni and the entire on the farms of Africa team have a lovely week.